So let's just go to the, to the whiteboard. Wow, we're going back to the whiteboard. Yeah, we're going to the whiteboard. We go to the whiteboard. I'm going to sit here. All right, can I erase this? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I was trying to work out, like basically turn this cortical column into a software diagram. Oh, yeah, you sent me something about that. Yeah, so, so I was thinking about, you know, two, three. Of course, you're trying to turn the diagram we talked about the other day, which to, in today's research meeting, I'm questioning parts of that, right? So, to yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah, I, of yeah. course, keep, keeping that in mind. And, but, I, and I talked about it with you the other day. I said, this is all speculative, so we don't really know what it's going to look like, but it's something like this. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's sort of useful to do. Yeah, okay. Maybe I should draw it in the software diagram, because right? you already okay. know how it okay. works. Yeah. So this is sort of how I'm just thinking of it as um, data in and data out, first of all. Yeah. We're talking about the software. So sensory input in, coming into layer four, and these are all going to be very simplified. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know layer five is over here, and, and there's motor output. Yeah. <laughs> it's a super simple circuit, right? Uh, well, it's not, by the way, that's not the goal of the circuit to have a motor output. Sure. Um, Sure, but I'm trying to trace the data flow, the flow of information the through the goal through of the, the, the goal of the cortex is to build a model of the world. Right. And uh, not to get an input and do something. Right. Building the model of the world involves movement. Yeah. But it's not like I don't want anyone to think that, hey, you got an input, you process it, you get an output. No, you get an input, you build a model of the world, and the model of the world is moving the input around. Right. Um, but it's not to do something necessarily yet. Yeah, okay? I can I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, I'm just trying to trace the data flow and so and I also was, I was trying to separate because there's obviously this is a this is a driver signal there's that's a driver signal this is oh, also wait, a driver gonna, signal draw that, you shouldn't put two three in there you should just put three okay uh, I'm not saying that it doesn't drive two but we, if you're going to draw that box three to box five it's it's layer three to layer five okay and then let's put I was going to put six a, right? 6A, right? Yeah, 6A down here. Yeah. And there would be another driver signal. Not uh, that driver, yes, but the other way is not a driver. Yeah. And this way is not. So this would be yeah. you know, feedback modulatory or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Predict prediction. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there is also, a, there's a feedback. Not, no, prediction. not really, actually. Okay. We, remember, we, we have that in the in the original comms paper, but we knew that wasn't quite right. Okay. Uh, and, and you don't need it anymore if 6A representations in the in the grid cell modules and the or are unique to the object okay so there is there actually physically in most parts of the neocortex there's no evidence for three to four there are some places where people see it but not much okay. so let's leave that as the, yeah. as that because we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a separate flow chart going back to four yeah to five, right yes there yeah yeah so, so let's move on to here. So that's going to be a driver too. That's a driver. That's well documented. And then we need six B, which I. Well, was that's the that's the current thinking. Yes. Current. In the in the discussion we had the other day. And essentially the same loop here as on the. Uh, let me think about that. Right. Um, hang on. Five. I'm not certain about that second signal there. Let's keep going. I'm certain about that, but this would be location. In this, the, in this, this particular version of the model, this would right. be location and orientation. This would be place. Because here's the here's the thing you need, Matt. When I move, as I'm anticipating my movement, right? Uh -huh. um, uh, I have to get that anticipated new location has to leave six p. So 6B represents also the new location as I move. We're going to make a prediction here, right? Based yeah, but that's not, I, I need to do more than a prediction. Okay. Because it has to go all the way back to 4. Right? I, um, from, from here. Yeah. And so yeah. if I just predict the letter 5, uh, it, it, does it, it, doesn't, it doesn't generate any activity. It's just a prediction. Um, I mean, this will eventually get back to, to 4, right? And uh, well, no. No, I think within the column. Uh, in the column, so um, uh, here's here's the general idea that we talked about the other day. This is just a, an hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay. You got two, and the idea here is that five could be uh, predicting the two. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
see, this is where it starts falling apart. Mm -hmm. let's, let's say, um, let's go with, the, I don't think this is true, but let's go with it for now. Let's say you had this, okay? Okay. Then, then, a, then if you had this, the whole system could work. You could say, oh, uh, as I move, I, uh, uh, well, no, I didn't see, I gotta, I gotta activate this guy too. You're, ask, you're, ask, you're asking us to fill in things that we didn't, you know, we haven't done before. So. Well, that's that's. Okay. So. True. <laughs> uh, um, I have to get a prediction back to layer four. That's that's the goal. Yes. The goal is to get a prediction back here, and uh, there has to be a. You can you can end up with a prediction input to four, but everything else flowing back, which has to not be a prediction, it has to be an activity, right? That's the, 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 otherwise you wouldn't get here. The prediction stops. It doesn't go any further until the next input comes in. Right, right. So what, uh, under this scenario here, um, uh, three would be what's actually occurring in the world, and two would be a sort of a prediction of what's going to occur based on my movement, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it still has to get back to four. Um, so one way to do that, you could, you could have this like here, like, like this. But if I'm going to do that, I might as well just go do this. I guess I'm thinking about it. Um, might as well do this. If three can predict four, then two can predict four, and then I would be done. Um, but is there no evidence of that? Uh, well, as I said, it's kind of screwy. There's, if you look at, um, the, the, cla in the classic descriptions in the, in the brain and the literature does not show three and two feeding back to four. Um, that's a bit misleading because if you actually look at the cortex and you see layer four and you see layer three, what you see is the cells that are classically layer three cells are sort of, there's a lot of them at this lower border here, and they send their dendrites down into here, or they said they, their axons and their dendrites come into the top of layer four. So there's like a blurring at the border here, hmm. where what's classic layer four is getting input to the bottom of layer three, and um, and so there's a blurring here. Hmm. Um, but if I look at the bottom of layer four and the top of layer three, there doesn't there doesn't appear to be anything. So this is a unknown. It's a little wonky. Hmm. Um, um, so it's, sort of it's also possible, and it's totally possible that our cells in layer three that sends a projection of their axons down to layer four, but we just haven't seen them, yeah. uh, or people haven't looked for them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's unknown. We'll just have to put this into the unknown category here. Yeah. What we can say for certain is somehow a prediction has to get back to layer four cells. That I can say. And after it's made this, this loop and gotten this information, the yeah. location incorporated into you have to get both of these sensory motor sort of loops. In yeah. Place. Now you're you're you're, you're going to want to talk to me about timing, but um, yeah, this is maybe you shouldn't even try. And well, we could. Right I mean, you I, could. I'm you interested said, in putting like one and then a two. Does this? Well, split you're going to follow the story. Here's what would happen. Assuming yeah. I have a new input. Yeah. That comes to happen here. That activates a bunch of cells here. Yeah. That activates a bunch of cells here. Oh, so this direct. Projection. Yeah, here. yeah. Which we have to have a bunch of cells here. These are all time. Yes. You know, time steps. Time one, time two, yeah. time three, time four. That happened very rapidly, five milliseconds type of thing. Between so is this this happening at the same time as three then, or are they do these? Um, that's right. Well, let's just walk about it. An input comes in and bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Now, assuming that let's uh, start there, okay. Um, at this point in time, I'm assuming that 6A and 6B already know where they're going, where they are. You've already, you've already decided where you're moving. Okay. You've yeah. got a movement command. So yeah. you've moved. These things are settled on their new positions. Mm -hmm. um, this has already made its prediction. So sort of from the last time. Step. Yeah. So we're starting. Right. Like, we've we're, moved. We're, we're about to move. Place. We we have we've anchored all the, the 6A and 6B are now in the new locations, and right. the new input comes in. Yeah. So it's been predicted. Great, I get my layer four, that specific representation goes to layer three, layer three projects to layer five, that's classic, everyone in the neuroscience book says that. Yeah. Um, 
Um, this back projection from five to quote two three is also well documented. Okay. So um, uh, in this case, uh, uh, that in this particular hypothesis, five would project back to two, and so that would be that would be time five. And um, this wouldn't change 6B. 6B is already there. So okay. if anything, I might be just learning oh, this. Oh, so this may already have incorporated this from the yeah, last time. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm uh, trying to get an idea of how, how to incorporate this. this you know, this, what this signal does here, this signal is more like um, trying to figure out where I am in the world. Yeah. So if I don't know where I am, if I give this input of 4, I'll predict, I'll try to drive the cells in layer 6 and say, oh, where might I be? Right. If I see a very unique feature, I know where I am in the world. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, but it's it's not like part of the flow of things. It's, it it's, can contribute it's to like, the flow. It's like it's like if this is, we'll call this anchoring. We'll say this is yeah. a way of anchoring um, these things. It's okay. it's it's a way of like picking the grid cell modules that are that are yeah. active. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying about that? Yeah. Yeah. So I it's do. not it's not part of the flow, and it's more like, it's like okay. I'm anchoring it myself in the world. I'm trying to figure out which of these cells should be active now. And, and once I'm anchored, then this doesn't do anything. That makes sense. It doesn't do anything after that. Right. So the flow would go like, I got some feature at some point in the world. I now uh, create a stable representation of that feature independent of orientation. I now um, assign that to um, uh, my model of the object, which is location and, and things at that location. Now, if I, if I move to a new location, I'm going to... Uh, uh, it's going to affect your model of movement within the space. You know, what, I, what I would prefer to see would be something like the following. I'd prefer to see that, um, well, that you could do this maybe in two different cell populations. But let's for the moment say, this, this then, if I move, what that's going to do is going to then update these cells to be the new place. Right? So if this drives this, but then my movement command moves us to a new thing, then that's going to tell the new place. My new place is going to be, this is going to be my predicted, this is going to be a predicted version, this is going to be the, um, the actual version. This is a predicted place, this is my actual you know, place. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, um, and now with my predicted place, I can, I can now I can actually, uh, this is, these are active predictions and this is a silent prediction. So now I've depolarized the right cells here. And, and um, anyway, in the diagram, in the talk we had the other day, that would be the flow. Bing, 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 bing. Movement occurs. And then I go bing, bing, prediction. I don't think this is that's this is silent. Right? Any oh, any, right, right. any any green thing is a silent prediction. Um, meaning, meaning it's not a driver. Meaning so that so. you can't observe it. Like I you can't observe it. I, I, if it's if it's internal to the cell, if it's depolarizing the cell, mm -hmm. like what we're doing here. Is, oh, of course. Right, you're depolarizing yeah. the cells. Yeah. The cells can't tell me when they're depolarized. Yeah, right. right. They're sitting there in their predictive state, but you can't know that. Yeah. So most of the predictions in the world you make, you're not aware of, because it's just these cells are being depolarized. I, I hear what you're talking about. I'm very confident of that. But there are, I can, I can say, hey, what is it I'm going to feel? And I put my finger on this edge here. I can anticipate. So if I can actually imagine the feeling, that means there has to be some cells firing. Yeah, right. That's because I'm imagining that thing. Right. So you so can compare it to So this would be an imagination. This would be yeah. like, I can actually read this out. This is a cell population I could say, Say that is that what is that? Oh, it's an edge because there's some cells that are firing here. Yeah. But I don't want to confuse that with what's reality, right? Yeah. That's an anticipation. Yeah. And it's an active participation. It's a, it's an active prediction. This is the actual thing that actually really is in the world. We don't want to mix those two together. Right. Um, and uh, and so uh, but down here I I can't I can't sense this prediction here. I can this is an active cells. Here I'm just depolarizing the cells, and so I can't I can't uh, read that out. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is in our in our models both of these guys are, um, um, you know these are these are cells that you would have the ability to perceive. These are cells that are projected up the cortex and so on, um, right? Uh, active and predict, uh, uh, predicted next thing and the actual next thing. I think it's interesting that these are so close together and yeah, one's yeah. an imagination of a thing and the other yeah. one is a well, perception there's a, there's of a thing. Well, there's a reason why that might be the case. 
they seem intimately tied together. Yeah. And the reason, a good reason for that would be, um, uh, let me just draw it over here if I can do that. Sure. All right, this, this may be a part of the answer. This is four, three, and two. Yeah. Um, here's your input. Um, one of the things that happens here is that there's these shared mini column response properties across all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that may play a key role in the solution here. Uh, in the following way, um, imagine layer four gets an input, and it's, layer four input drives which mini columns are active. Right. And it's going to drive which mini columns are active in both of these things. Right. Um, it's sort of saying, uh, you guys are going to learn something, but you're all going to learn the same thing in some way. And um, so in our diagram here, I come back to here from layer five. Yeah. And um, uh, this guy goes, you know, to layer five. Um, uh, what we might, what we're doing though, is when we're forming a representation in two and forming a representation in two, three, they're they're going to be sort of derived from the same many columns, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I want these two things. The representation of layer three is going to use the same many columns as the representation of layer two. I want to force that because yeah. I'm, I'm I'm coupling these two, two, these two guys together. And the advantage of that is is that when I learn. Um, when I learn, when I have to learn a projection from five to two, I'm going to pick the same mini comms that I use going from three to five, and so it, it's going to guarantee me that if I think from a mini comm perspective, that if this mini comm is active on the way over, uh, over this one's going to be active on the way back, and if this one's active, on the way over, this one's going to be active on the way back. It's sort of forcing these two representations, representations to be similar. Yeah. Um, well, we could give it. There and is. then, and then, and by the way, this could be. How, oh, you know, we were talking this moment ago about how four isn't, we don't get these projections from layer. Remember we were talking about three doesn't project back to layer four? Yes. But they do share the mini comms. Yes. Um, and mini comms are defined by inhibitory cells, these bipolar inhibitory cells, uh -huh. which span layers. Okay. So this, this could be the solution. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it could be. We, we should, should I remove this? Because we're talking about how this doesn't exist. Well, well, it, well, in some sense, I'm saying how it could exist. Okay. When I say it doesn't exist, the pyramidal cells in layer three do not project right. to, the, to the steli it's, cells. It's not a projection. Four. It's a sink. It's, it's not these cells, the pyramidal cells, the excitatory pyramidal cells do not connect to the excitatory cells here. Right. right. But. The inhibitory. It, cells. it, it um. It, but but we do know that these these mini comms span across all the layers here, uh -huh. right? Meaning there's a tying between these guys, and that tying is is going to be it's the best hypothesis of what things is these in, it's these uh, bipolar cells, or sometimes they're called um, chandelier. Uh, not the chandelier ones, they're the other one. Uh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot the name. Oh gosh, I forget to see. Oh uh, no. Uh, anyway, let's call them bipolar cells because they're a form of bipolar cells. Okay. Um, so these are like these inhibitory neurons that, that span mini columns and, yeah. and they define the mini column. So in that regard, one could say the following. When I put back back to here, I'm going to invoke these set of mini columns and I will invoke these set of mini columns down here. It's not going to be on a cell to cell basis. Right? I can't say this particular population of cells is going to invoke this particular population of cells. Yeah. What I can say is that this set of mini comms will invoke the same set of mini comms here. Yes, right. Um, which is not a it's 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 not a very very sp specific um, uh, prediction, but it is still a prediction. So, um, so do you think that? I mean, it, it sort of seems obvious that as mini comms activate in four, that could select uh, cells in these two layers to be available, or, or somehow select them. On the way back, this could set a different, select a different set of mini columns that would enforce some activity in layer well, four. Well, we want. I'm saying is that we want the back flow to make a prediction here. Yes. And when, I, when we normally think of a prediction, like from layer six, layer four, we think it is a very specific cell population to a very specific cell population. Yes. 
What I'm saying is that the prediction coming back may be a specific mini po column yeah, population okay. to a specific mini column population. That makes sense. And that fits the biology. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the implications of that are, but that fits the biology. That's what I would expect to happen. If you invoke a mini column here, it's going to invoke the mini column across all layers. Yeah. So if layer five predicting back here can say, I'm going to tell you, here's my prediction. Um, Oh, this is really interesting. Uh, okay, uh, uh, we, it, this is going to take much more time to figure this out than we should. But the, the, there's this, the idea here, because even these mini columns that span, they seem to span all the layers, every one of them. Every single damn layer seems to be the same mini column have basically the same sort of invocation, if you will. It's hard to make that work in my head with these with layers. Well, that could, be the, that could be the key to making it work. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay? I bet it is. Uh, um, <laughs> The, the thought here is um, some of these predictions, some of these backflow predictions can be done via mini columns. I could predict the next mini columns, um, such as projecting back to layer two. And it's, it, if I think about, and then I could predict the next mini, and then it would invoke the, in, depolarize the mini comms in this layer, uh, the cells in all these mini comms in this layer. The one way to think about this, if you, if you, if you depolarize the cells in mini comms, what you're predicting is, is the input. It's like, it's, a, it's like I'm predicting this note in the melody, the next note in the melody. Yeah. But I'm not predicting the specific, uh, the second like inner context. context of yes, I'm not predicting the context. Predicting the it's context. just saying like, hey, you know what? As long as it's, a, it's an interval of a third, we're good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm predicting yeah. the interval of the third. That's the 23rd interval right. in It's like you know, a spatial feature. It's just yeah. a spatial yeah, it's, selection. Yeah, it's, it's, it's predicting the, the, the output of the spatial pool. Yeah, what you're predicting. exactly. Um, this prediction we were doing from here to here was more specific than that. It was saying um, that um, you have a very specific cell population here. Oh, I think the domino people are here. Yeah, we we'll probably yeah. have to wrap this okay, up. Okay, we can wrap it up. Give me five but, minutes. Okay, but this is a great idea. There's a this is a great idea that 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 it's always bothered me. Why do we have these mini columns across all the layers? Yeah, it makes no sense to me. I never really. I just I just I understand why we have them in our in our in our sequence memory algorithm. We have a reason why they're there. It's right. very. It's a beautiful idea. I'm almost certain it's correct. People love it. Neuroscience people really catch on to that. They go, oh, that's a really great idea. Um, but why do we have the same mini columns everywhere? That's never been understood. I just didn't understand it. It could be the next paper. Type. Well, well, no, it's, it's, you know, as we were just talking in the research meeting, we have to solve this circuitry. We have to figure out how the whole damn thing works. Yeah. And these mini columns are clearly a part of the answer. Yeah. So we've only had some part of it. We said, oh, we need mini columns to do our high order representations. This could be a way of propagating predictions um, across the layers, you essentially, anyone could, any one of these layers could say, here's the next set of mini columns, guys. And uh, provide a spatial context, at least, for whatever's happening. Yeah. So this, I remember I had a problem here, like I said, oh my god, I got to get this prediction. This new set of po uh, cell populations here has to go all the way back to layer four. Mm. There could be a shortcut. <laughs> yeah. The shortcut is, yeah. go through the mini column channel. Yeah. And uh, the Minicom channel would say, fine, you just you take those new cells and activate the underlying Minicoms, and the underlying Minicoms present a prediction for everybody. It pred it's a prediction oh, this, for layer three, layer two, layer four. This, um, this seems really, this would be amazing. So I, mean, I was just thinking, like, if, when, you're, when you don't know an object and you're, and you're trying to learn an object, perhaps there's a lot of Minicom activity happening because you don't know it. And once you you're learning one and you're moving through it into a known space, maybe they sync up. Maybe I don't, this, no, this I don't think they sync up. up. I think I think the, the structure of the cortex means they're always synced up. They're always synced yeah, up. Yeah, these these uh, it's not these, like they're scattered. No, these bipolar cells uh -huh. they exist. They're physical cells. This is what they do. Okay. So it, I don't think you're going to see this sorting going on. All of a sudden they line up. Bingo. It's okay. it's more like there's two channels of communication. There's neuron-to-neuron -neuron communication, which is from cell population to cell population. Yeah. Very specific. Um, but there's this back channel. And the back channel is at the level of mini columns. And it sort of, um, it, allows, it allows any layer of cells to tell any other layer of cells, 
this is the, it's not the detailed representation you're going to get, but it's the, it's the, 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 the more cruder mini column representation you're going to get. Yeah. And that's a great idea. We have to stop. So yeah. let's stop there. Okay. But we need to think about that more. Okay, uh, great. Sounds good to that. me. Yeah, it's always good having conversations because we always think of something. Right, okay, thanks. thanks. That was good. Thanks for watching. Wow. I'll, I'll be on the forum. Maybe I should write a note about that. Um.